Is that not one of the prettiest pictures you've ever saw? It's my Reaper. Isn't he cute? I just rub him. That's my baby. And then if you look to the side, I'm getting my drag queen stuff ready. I'm like collecting all my stuff. Oh, look, there's my little diffuser from Scentsy. I got that the other day. Amber Crawford. She's the one to go to. Or you're all your stuff. And there's some more of my drag queen stuff. Mm, there's my face powder. This is the powder of one of my um, one of my favorite drag queens, Trixie. Um, she suggested this. She didn't actually say what kind it was, but when she said that it had this old lady smell, I knew exactly what she was talking about. I was like, girl, I know. So I got me some of that. I have more makeup coming, but this stuff's expensive. I'm like, you know, I'm starting to learn like, oh, you know what? I can't buy like the really expensive stuff. I looked into it. Too expensive. Can't do it. Can't do it. For me, for just an everyday wear, I can totally do it. There was some stuff that I saw that I was like, ooh, I want that. But just for putting on drag makeup, there's just no way. No way that I could afford to to spend that kind of money on, on makeup. But look at these are glitters. Isn't that cool? Isn't that pretty? I just love it. Yeah. And besides, I just want to practice. I'm no artist. Jessica is actually the artist. I can imagine the kind of um, drag makeup that she can do. I bet you she's amazing at it. Oh, look, they're fighting. Oh, look, there's Willow. Isn't she beautiful? Hey, guys, stop. I'm talking here. They're like, we don't care. But Jessica does. I, I bet she's going to do awesome drag makeup. I'm, I'm sure she will. We may even do Joel. Yeah. <laughs> See what we can do with his face. Oh. oh, Willow. So I actually slept through the night. It's amazing. My plan was to get up and do some gardening. I still have some stuff to transplant. And because uh, it takes a bit of a time, takes some time. And then I want to get them outside under a shade cloth and start acclimating them. Um, I want to start acclimating them to... Uh, to the cold and heat and everything so i'm doing that but i slept i was so tired i was so tired hey guys could you please stop please please as you can tell my dogs aren't trained very well because you know i just let them do whatever they want hey guys my nose is dripping our allergies getting to everybody they've gotten to me my face is just like I feel like I'm just dripping all over the place all the time. Willow, please stop or I'm going to get the, um, well, I don't see one anywhere, but I'm going to get a, a spray bottle on you if you don't. Willow, Willow, Will see, see, this is, this is why I don't have little kids anymore because I, I don't know how to discipline them. I'm not going to lie, when I was younger, I probably started to rule my children with a strong hand until I realized, boy, that is like the most abusive thing ever. You know, how, how we used to get like beat, that was abusive and we didn't realize how abusive and how emotionally like traumatizing that is to somebody, you know, and then you take that on to your to you know you, you think that's the way to do it and so then you do that with your own children and but um you know early on i started to realize that oh my god so now i do this with, this is how i i teach my dogs who get away with murder and um and then now i have my own kids saying you need to you need to discipline those dogs yeah whatever oh look there's another one this is suela's hi suela Hi, Suela, what are you doing? Suela, actually, um, most of the other dogs don't like Suela because she steals food right out of their mouth. So um, they've almost killed her one time. Um, so she is, uh, if anybody's complained about quarantine, you have no complaints. She is quarantined 24 seven um, in the living room. Um, she has access to the living room and to the kitchen. And there is a place in the kitchen There's a, where she can sun herself and everything. Um, we have doggy pads down and stuff uh, for her to go on that. But um, I have tried to um, 
quarantine the other dogs and try to get her outside to get some sun uh, every once in a while. But she doesn't want to go. She's that afraid. And I don't blame her. But, um, yeah, a lot of the, uh, some of the other dogs don't like her. So she's quarantined to keep her safe. And she's, she's actually okay with that because she gets the comfort, the comforts of the living room, which is good. See my babies. These are just my morning thoughts. Um, I slept through the night. I couldn't believe I slept through the night. I so I went to sleep probably about 10 o'clock yesterday after work. And then Joel came home. Um, I found out I got an EA. I bet y'all are happy about that. And, um, um, but you know what? God knows what you need. God always knows what you need. And then I looked over at Joel and I was like, I'm hungry. I got an EA. I want food because <laughs> I haven't been eating very well lately. And he was like, uh, so I told him CJ's Carl's Jr. And he was like, uh, and I was like, I want something crappy to eat. I don't care. Um, so we, uh, got Taco Bell, ate some Taco Bell and, uh, went to the bathroom because it went straight through me. <laughs> I can't eat that stuff no more. I'm too old for that stuff. And fell back to sleep until about almost five in the morning now. Is it about five now? But I needed it. My body needed that. I just, you know, sometimes I do things to myself that I, I, I don't realize, you know, it's not good for you, but I'm like, you know, I can do this. I can do this and I do it. But at some point, I think, you know, God steps in and he's like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to happen. Which I think is a really good thing, actually. You know, he keeps me, he keeps me going and he keeps me there. You know, we've had, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they see the position that me and my husband are in right now. And, and you know, and, and they get angry because I say that my life during all of this has not really changed. It really hasn't. And, and no matter what, it, it wouldn't change. And it's not because we, we don't struggle with things. It's because of who we are. It's because of what we've learned, uh, you know, from our past experiences. You know, I mean, our life was not always like this. We have definitely had to pull ourselves out from the dirt. You know, um, I re remember one time, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't have heat for like a year year and a half well maybe even longer I don't even remember because it got just got to be a normal for us that we didn't have heat you know I, I remember you know coming home from work and the doors would be frozen shut and there would be there would be you know ice on the windows and <clears throat> and the kids for Christmas I remember for Christmas I got them <laughs> I got them gloves and hats so they could sleep in <laughs> Um, I can honestly say that if social service would have known the kind of conditions that we were living in, that they would have taken our children. I know this. I'm getting all weepy thinking about it. <laughs> but um, it's um, definitely been a struggle, you know, getting to where we are. And uh, I just thank God. And, you know, a lot of stuff is coming up as far as political-wise. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they look at me and they, I don't really ever say what I'm affiliated with. I can tell you this, I didn't vote for Trump. But I can tell you that I am a Republican. And um, I used to be Democrat. I used to be a Democrat and I was all for it. And at that one point, when we were struggling so hard and I needed to feed my children, I went to social service. I went into that office as a Democrat, thinking that they were gonna help me. And we had went through our resources. We had, we had tapped what we could and they wouldn't help me. I didn't want anything but a few months of food stamps to feed my children. That's what I wanted. That's all I needed to get back up on my feet. And they wouldn't help me. And I just, I couldn't believe it. That it, it, I just, I was appalled that this system for somebody who wants to work and wants to do something could not get any help. So I can tell you that day I walked in as a Democrat and I walked out of there a Republican. And that has probably been 
oh God, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago. But I'm not stupid. You know, when I saw that Trump was running, you know, I mean, and I saw the kind of, you know, behaviors that w that he, he, that he's known for, I did not vote for him. I did not. I just, I couldn't. I was like, this, I can't, you know, there's just no way. But would I, would I still say that I have, you know, um, that I'm very much conservative? I, I think I am in some respect. I think I, I maybe I'm more, I, I say that I'm more conservative, but you know, there are aspects of me that is very still liberal. I mean, there is, I mean, Terry, my, one of my bestest friends, Terry will say, she always says, you're a Democrat. Hey, she, and she will, she'll always say, you're a Democrat. I don't care what you say, you know, that your thoughts and stuff are Democrat. Well, maybe there is, maybe there is a lot of, it, you know, um, but I won't vote that way. It wasn't there for me. It wasn't, it wasn't there for me. It didn't help me. And, you know, it was at a time that I really, really needed it, that we were, we were down. And I remember, you know, I remember what I had to do. And uh, we pawned a lot of stuff. We pawned what we could to pay our bills, to get back up on our feet. And I prayed a lot. I was on my knees a lot. No, I, no, you know what? I wasn't on my knees. I was on my face. I'll tell you that. I was completely on my face. And I prayed a lot. I was down. I was down and down and dirty. And uh, so everything that we have now, it's not because of my hard work, you know, my determination. You know, that may have a part. That may have a part. But what it actually is, it's because I have faith. I have faith in. I have faith in myself. I have faith in my family, and that's what takes us through that's exactly what takes us through so you know I can't say that this everything that's going on has not affected us it's we don't let it affect us we do what we have to do and we keep going with a light heart with a light heart that's what we do you know I've learned from my experiences and that's really what you have to do you know I've I'm I'm just going to keep going. And no matter what, I will always be okay. Always be okay. Well, now that I've given you like a really sob story, <laughs> part of my sob story <laughs> from my past, you know, I always get all choked up every time I talk about it because it was a hard time for us. It was a very hard time for us. Um, not being able to have uh, heat but you know what I found out about the kids? They thought it was normal. We didn't have hot water for a while now too, I remember. Um, <laughs> I remember Joel, he would heat water on the stove. Thank God we still had, had electricity. He would heat water on the stove and he would line them up in the bathtub. He was such a good daddy. He would line them up in the bathtub and he would give them baths in the bathtub. Because this is when they were little. They were tiny. Jessica was like, geez, what, two maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so they would get lined up in the bathroom, in the bathtub, and he would give them baths that way, with some hot water. <laughs> We've had a rough life. It hasn't been easy all the time. And, you know, I, I thank God for, I thank God for everything. I thank God for my house. I thank God for my backyard where I can have a beautiful garden in the summers. And, and, uh, I, I give it all to him. I do. He was the one, he was the one who allowed this. <laughs> and anything that happens in my life, I'll give it to him because he's the one. He's the one who's brought me through. Not not me. Because he's the one who's given me the strength. He's the one who has given me the determination. He's the one who has given it to me. Not anybody else. Not anybody else. Not myself. Not my husband. He has. <laughs> Look, I'm getting all emotional again. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a rough part of my life. It was a rough part of my life. And we're through it. So anybody who, you know, who really has things to say about me, and I think that's what hurts the most. You don't know my whole life and you don't know my whole story. And at some point, maybe, maybe I'll tell you. And at some point, maybe I won't because it's none of your business. 
quite honestly. Um, but um, it's my life. It's my life. Anyway, um, these are just my morning thoughts that popped into my head this morning. And uh, I hope everybody has a good day. And I hope uh, everybody continues to stay safe. Mask up. Keep yourself safe. Don't, don't try to just be defiant just because you can. Keep yourself safe. I'm not telling you to keep anybody else safe but yourself. Keep yourself safe. Put that mask on. And um, have a good week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.